Welcome, everyone, back to the second episode of Learn With Ben. For those who are familiar with the show and missed the first episode, Jason is on vacation. He's off, you know, being a hipster and eating charcuterie and doing, you know, Portlandian things. And so I'm here uh, to basically take over as a guest host, and uh, Jason will be back starting next week. But in the meantime, I'm really excited to be here with Hung Su. Uh, Hung Su, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for introducing me, Ben. Uh, this should be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell people a little bit about your background and um, so for those who don't know you? Yeah. So I'm an Aussie web UI engineer uh, here in the United States. I'm extremely obsessed with writing notes, so I'm super keen to write some notes here with Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. And you're uh, the, one of the lead front-end engineers at Politico, right? Yeah, that's right. There you go. All right. Well, in that case, and let's go ahead and so note taking, right? This is something that I know might seem a little bit abstract from like the typical like developer talk, but like why is note taking important to you? Maybe that's like a great place to start. Yeah, I feel like um, note taking seems to form the backbone of almost uh, every um, uh, every skill that you can think of, like every kind of um, uh, walk of life um, you can. Uh, people need to think and to think uh, uh, a lot of, that can be so so greatly enhanced uh, with um, the note making methodologies that we use. So um, uh, like not just for us here in software engineering, but uh, chefs, uh, film directors, uh, city planners, like like every kind of discipline, uh, you, you got to take notes and uh, it's so important to take them well. Yeah, it certainly is. And so I guess over the course of the time, like, you know, today we're here. Um, so for those who don't know, we're here to talk about Obsidian in particular. And so, and, you know, with your journey with note-taking, what apps have you used kind of up until this point? We'll dive into Obsidian later, but um, maybe give some context for people. Yeah, so I feel like I've gone through a similar journey to a lot of other people. I think a lot of other people um, uh, hopped on the Evernote and OneNote trains like maybe like a decade ago. So they've been around for such a long time. And I got off those trains and moved on to something called Dynalist. And then uh, from Dynalist, I moved into um, I wanted to look into uh, local first uh, forms of note taking since um, like all those other note taking methods I'd used were web first, but uh, mm. we're going to be talking a little bit today about local first note taking and why that is uh, many times better. All right. Yeah, that's exciting. Well, in that case, let's go ahead and switch over then um, and sort of t uh, dive into our uh, topic at hand. So, okay. It looks like everyone, hopefully you can see my screen. Um, so, yep, today we're here to talk about building a second brain with Obsidian. And before we jump into it, I want to give um, a shout out to Jordan from White Coat Captioning, who's here to uh, make sure that our show is captioned. And we're incredibly grateful. Thanks, Jordan, for being here. And live captioning is made possible by our sponsors, Netlify, Fauna, Auth0, and Hasura. So with that, um, Hansu, where would you like to get started? Yeah, so um, I guess we could talk a little bit about... Um... I guess the, the two connected things, which are well, Obsidian and then note taking as a general discipline. So, wow. um, so Obsidian itself. Um, so this is not the first time Obsidian has featured on this channel, right? Uh, we featured Obsidian <laughs> on Tuesday. Uh, we talked and... a little bit about it. Yes, I, I'm okay. kind of a big stand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, like we will we will definitely talk more about other uh, note taking tools because there are so many. But mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion, Obsidian has. Um, the right combination of features that address um, really good long-term knowledge management. And mm. um, I think that uh, a lot of people run into um, some un unfortunate scaling problems with knowledge management when they use other tools. And Obsidian has a lot of uh, features that really take care of that stuff. So that's why uh, we're choosing Obsidian over some of the other things. Uh, and um, but uh, some of the note-taking methods that we are going to talk about today, like th they will translate to other note-taking tools. So if you guys don't want to switch, we you certainly don't have to. <laughs> Great. Um, all right. Hello, Anna. What's up, Nohako? Gosh, we got a lot of people in the chat loving it. Um, and and as always, please, uh, just like with Jason's show, if you have questions for us as we go, we'll be checking the chat periodically. So happy to answer questions as we go. Um, with that said, do we think we should start by opening opening like a basic Obsidian vault, or what would you like to do? Yeah, let's open up a brand new vault and let's start touring people um, through Obsidian and how we can start thinking a little bit differently about notes. Yeah, that sounds great. So 
For those following along, we're going to go ahead and create a new repo actually on Learn with JSON so that you actually have some, you can basically clone this. And actually, again, Obsidian, actually, one thing we didn't even note is it's, it's, it's completely free. So you can totally download it and play with it yourself um, once we have this repo set up. So let's go and get that set up. This will be let's le uh, learn. Oh, it's called let's learn. That's like the model that Jason usually uses. Let's learn Obsidian. And then we'll make sure this is public. And let's add a readme file. Let's go and create that. And so in the meantime, while we're getting this set up, um, why don't we talk a little bit about local first? Like, what does that mean? And why, what, how is this approach unique? Or one of the unique aspects of Obsidian? Yeah, so um, uh, we've, there's so many levels of this, isn't there? Uh, one mm -hmm. of the big ones is that um, there have been so many uh, data breaches of uh, major, um, uh, major cloud service providers in the last however many years. And it feels a little bit like uh, playing uh, a game of Russian roulette of, of trying to choose a provider that hasn't been hacked when it comes to uh, storing our notes and our very personal things. So one of the nice things about Local First is that, well, you don't really have to worry about that. Uh, all your notes are yours. And uh, the other uh, really big thing with uh, Local First is that you can do... Um, uh, performant things that are just really not possible um, uh, when you all have to pull your notes uh, from the web uh, every time. Uh, if you have them locally on your device, you can access them when you don't have an internet connection, uh, which is an another big thing. I'm sure a lot of you in this age of remote are um, probably messing around with Wi-Fi and maybe uh, Wi-Fi is not so great, but you still need your notes. You, you need them all the time. So um, it is uh, much better in my opinion to just have them local all the time. You can always work with them. Uh, so that you have that uh, reliability, you can build that trust uh, in your note system that they are always there for you. Yeah, that's an excellent point. And so again, for those who haven't, like for those new to Obsidian, really what Obsidian does is manage a file or a folder on your computer that's full of markdown files. That's basically its job. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by creating a new vault. And the way we do this is, so this is the new UI, uh, sorry, this is the UI for creating a vault. And so we're gonna go ahead and do that create here. Um, and let's call this, let's learn uh, Obsidian. This is the name of our vault. And then we simply point it at a folder that we wanna keep synced. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's jump back into the projects. Great. And, and then... I see your message, Cassidy. And in all honesty, <laughs> if we have hurt feelings uh, and I'm being very serious, uh, writing notes and reading your own notes is extremely therapeutic and I'm not even kidding. <laughs> and, we, and, we, and we might even get into that a little bit later today. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, a lot of times when we talk about note taking, right, it's often taken that from the productivity angle, right, of like remembering things. But uh, I think, yes, you and I would definitely have to talk about other ways that we're using <laughs> note taking systems. That's a whole other thing. Yes, there's that whole branch of using note taking as um, part of your productivity system to create output, but then there's also um, note taking, note writing as a way of like talking through like the, the feelings and stuff and it's like a just tangle of things that are in your head. And then mm -hmm. it's talk um, as a creativity tool. There's yeah, yeah, so many directions we can go in. Uh, okay, so, um, so we good. have a new vault. So I'm gonna go ahead and click open. So we'll see here that we've mm -hmm. now pointed it and I'm gonna go ahead and hit create. All right, here we go. And we have Obsidian open. So let's walk us through this, Hansu. Okay, um, so we have uh, no file open. So we can create a new file in a bunch of different ways. So we can do it the way that they are suggesting, which is um, uh, command N. So I guess we can, we can do that. But uh, we can also create a file when we search for things. And this should be um, the, I think this should be the default for um, uh, most people when they um, uh, use Obsidian in the long term. Mm. And um, uh, um, so the reason for that is, well, what, why don't we start by creating a note uh, that way? Okay. And yeah, so um, let's maybe think about something that we want, for the, mm. for instance. So um, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe I want to uh, write a note about someone uh, in our comments, um, or actually we can make we can make a note about you, then. Okay. We can make a Sounds note. Sounds good. Yeah. Let's let's search our our vault for anything about. Ben, and to search for something about Ben, uh, we need to bring up um, our little search, which is um, Control O. Oh, sorry, uh, Command O. I think for okay. you, Matt. Command O. Yeah. Yep, I can see here we have this little modal that just popped up. 
yes. And we're going to ask the vault, hey, do you have anything on Ben Hong? So if we, and we don't have anything for Ben Hong, but uh, we just hit enter to create a note. And now we have a space for something on Ben Hong. Mm. And okay. And um, th this is, uh, this seems simple, but I think this is a really big deal because a lot of other note-taking systems don't have this. So uh, particularly for those of you who are coming from, say, uh, OneNote or Evernote, uh, you may be used to the general idea of creating a note by going into a folder first or they're going into a notebook first. Like you, you make this decision where a note should go before you even create the note. And uh, Obsidian uh, create um, has kind of... a paradigm shift of thinking like you th you think um about what you want first and then you search for that and if it's not there then you make it and um that uh makes it so much easier to start creating notes and we'll talk more about that uh, as we get into this so okay so we have created a note for uh, something that we want and um i wanted to create a note about you ben hong maybe because um uh maybe because i want to buy you a present uh maybe because <laughs> i want to do something nice for you You're so, so nice. <laughs> yeah so when we um yeah so when we write notes about people maybe we can write something about uh things that you like so we can maybe make a heading for yeah. uh things that ben likes things that he likes and so yeah. also probably worth mentioning is that obsidian is markdown first so for a lot of us who are developers this should be a syntax we're quite familiar with and so um as you can see here i'm using the markdown syntax for uh h2 basically yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is great to bring up, and I know that I know that some people who have a lot of trouble are getting their heads around uh, Markdown for uh, whatever reason, and that's totally okay. And um, if you're not comfortable with Markdown, then certainly don't use uh, Obsidian. Uh, we'll uh, talk for about now. some other tools for now. Uh, for yeah, in the yeah. future, they might <laughs> yeah. be fixing this. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, things that Ben likes, we can totally just go off like the things I see in your stream. We can, I, I would make the assumption that Ben likes Star Wars based on that gigantic A-wing. So <laughs> we might we might make a little list item here. Uh, yeah, Star Wars. What else can we glean from your little uh, stream here? Uh, I think it's. I think it would be safe to say that you like Funko Pop. Uh, All right. Yep, that is true. I do have quite a bit of Funko Pop. Yeah, and. Honestly, this is actually enough for us to get started with um, some connected note thinking. So we have a couple of items that you like. And now um, another way that we can create notes, which is just mental and a lot of other uh, note-taking systems don't have, is we can mm -hmm. select one of these items. So let's say we want to uh, uh, select Star Wars, like we take the little mouse and just um, select Star yep. Wars. And, and we're going to hit um, our, our left square bracket twice. And we're going to change this into a link. Hey, look at that. Change color oh. and everything. Yes. So uh, now we've created this new, or not quite created this new page for Star Wars. Now we're going to, uh, I think it's uh, command click on yep. Star Wars to open it up. Yeah. Okay. And now we've created this page, Star Wars, and it is connected to Ben Hogg. So um, uh, just uh, now to get into the real magic of, um, why this is so special we we need another we i think we need another person who likes star wars so we I think we so. should let's do it yeah so so let's create uh, another note for well let's create a note for me uh, all right so hung su so we are we are asking the vaults do you have anything on hung su you don't and that is okay because we can just create it we press enter to create and we can mention that hung su likes star wars so and also actually i saw a question from meg um the reason i'm starting with an h2 is correct I usually have um, the H1 like following sort of semantic HTML as like the page title. So theoretically, we could have it populate like the note title, um, or you can customize it whatever you want. I usually try to match it to the file title to maintain some consistency. But yeah, that's usually why I um, I do an H2. So think so you mentioned so okay so how do I add so if I just type Star Wars is this what you're referring to Hong Su or are you referring to something else? Oh yeah, this is a great question, Ben. So um, we can ask the vault. Uh, in a different way um, uh, to bring up pages. So if you actually delete that um, uh, item and yeah. uh, let's let's show people how this works. So if we start typing a uh, double left square bracket. Yep. And Whoa. hey, look, we have a list of suggestions. <laughs> yeah, so we can choose Star Wars, this note that we've already made. And yeah. yes, this, we have this gorgeous order complete. Um, yeah, so this is, uh, kind of game changing when you can just uh, kind of like uh, ask your vault, ask your notes um, if it already has 
something. And mm. um, like we only have three notes here, but we can already kind of like start to see the power. And um, um, for those of you in the chat, like this really changes the game once you get into the hundreds or thousands of notes that you've written yourself. And you can just mm. ask ask your note ask your note system if you ha if it has something and uh, so many times it will um mm -hmm. oh i see a question um is there a uh, markdown syntax that is obsidian only and the answer is yes uh, there is some uh syntax that is obsidian only and we'll um i'll try to distinguish um the obsidian only syntax from um uh, the other syntax so they do uh, try to keep to the standard as much as possible it seems though they're not yes. trying to really mess with it yeah yeah, they do try. Uh, we, I can showcase one of these right now. In fact, mm, like let's, let's do it. Uh, yeah, let's go to your note, Ben. And, okay, so I'm gonna command yeah. O and let's go to Ben Hong. Yes, let's ask the system for what it knows about <laughs> Ben, and then let's let's create a new section. Let's create something. Okay. Let's let's call it um, uh, things that Ben said. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Yes, things that Ben said. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and I'm trying to think of some uh, some lovely funny thing that um, you said to me recently. Um, let's, uh, okay, we, 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 don't have, we, don't have, we, don't, we don't have to make this embarrassing, but um, okay, let's start by uh, using the, the quote syntax. So yes, uh, right. the, um, the angle good. bracket. Yep, yep, angle bracket. And then um, recently you told me that, oh, I don't know, you, you, you told me that I can um, I press, I press G to edit a, a wall in Fortnite. Of, well, okay. Uh, yeah. That's that's that's, that, that's that's what I can think of right now. Yeah. Um, great. I did tell you that recently. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we have a quote uh, on Ben's page, and uh, just for uh, just for fun, um, uh, I was going to reference this in my note. And yeah, we may as well go there. We we can go to uh, yeah, let's Hung Su. Okay. okay. So let's go open Hung Su, and I'm going to open it in a new pane. So I'm going to hit Command Enter. And you'll see that now we have the multi-column. So now we have two. Frames. Yeah, and this is this is a huge deal as well. Like I want, I do want to talk a little bit about this. So um, I know that coming from uh, Evernote, OneNote, and Don't Listen, uh, basically every other tool, uh, a lot of the time I can only really look at one note at a time. And Obsidian kind of wants to change the game a little bit. It wants to you. It wants you, the Obsidian users, to think of um, uh, looking at multiple notes like at the same time. And um, part of the reason for this is because um, uh, we want people to kind of get into, well, um, some first principles thinking, like uh, trying to uh, make new ideas out of other ideas. And um, uh, one way that we can do that is open a lot of different panes at the same time. So you've, mm -hmm. you've shown us a little side by side here. Uh, Obsidian can split uh, many other different ways. I think pretty sure you can split vertically as well. I think you can yeah. put things in the sidebar. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but we don't have to get into that right now. Uh, <laughs> let's get into the. I wanted to show the um, the fancy little bit of Obsidian specific syntax, which is yeah, let's do it. A uh, an, uh, a block a block embed. So okay. uh, yeah. So um, the thing I'm, I'm about to say doesn't really belong under things he likes, but we're, we're just going to borrow this note anyway. Uh, if you could, uh, yeah, sure. Um, uh, we could call this uh, chats with Hansu or something like that. Uh, yeah. Wait, I'm in the wait, chats with Ben. You mean chats with? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, <laughs> chats with Ben Hong. Okay, and we're going to do a block embed. So this All is, right. uh, I think it's exclamation mark. Okay, and then double left, double left square. Okay. okay, so now, so now we have the lovely auto complete again. So we're going to uh, bring up yes bring up Ben Hong. And uh, so uh, it is auto completed that, but we want to go back a little bit. Yes. Okay. And then we're going to do um, this character carrot. Um, yeah. Yep. And then, hey, look at this little auto complete list. So <laughs> for those of you who don't know what this is, um, uh, well, this is a list of the things inside that note. And we can make a direct reference to the thing that Ben said to me, which was press G to edit a wall in Fortnite. So we can edit, we can hit that. And then, uh, Ben, if you could control E, I think. Oh, sorry. Yep, is it command control e. or com command, command E? e. Sorry, I'm, yep. I'm sorry. I'm coming from Windows land. And see here in the preview, we have an embedded note and, uh, well, sorry, an embedded block with a link to the original block. So if you actually totally close uh, your pane, yep. uh, um, your left pane, and if we hit that little link um, in the embedded block, uh, that takes us to the original. Look at that. 
Look yeah. at that. <laughs> so <laughs> yes. So here is one example of the Obsidian specific syntax. This doesn't work in other Markdown editors, but it is very cool, and I think you should use it. Um, yeah, yeah, it's so good. Um, okay. I think we had a question. Let's let's take a moment real quick. Um, I'm going to just move away from the mic. So Socket Studio, I think, started with. Uh, so do we need to add code? Uh, no, uh, I would say right. Code is not necessary. Um, we're going to talk about customization later because that is definitely a really great aspect of Obsidian. But it is, I would say, Kung Tzu is not required at all, right? It is not required. No. Uh, but yes, uh, for a lot of you, I'm sure. Um, uh, uh, super proficient developers, and you probably want to insert some of your own code into your notes, and we'll talk about uh, the many magical ways uh, that can uh, do incredible things. Great. We'll get into that. Um, let's see. From Mighty Big, is there a date automatically attached to the note? Um, ah, so we've talked a bit about this, haven't we, Ben? Uh, yeah, we so, have. yeah, so obviously there's there's just the file level, kind of like operating system level, um, uh, stuff on each of the notes, but um, my, myself and Ben, we like to um, define those more explicitly in the note. And um, the way that we generally do this is with templates, and we can talk about uh, templates uh, real soon. Sounds good. Yeah. So um, great. Let's do that. Uh, Sam, hey, what's up, Sam? Sam says very roamy. Yes, for those coming from the Rome ecosystem, you might recognize um, a bit of this and. Um, we actually need to show the the right panel actually in a little bit because I think we need to yeah. talk a bit about the uh, yeah the relationships. Okay. Yeah. Is we can the talk auto about that a oh, bit too. Yeah. Jimena actually had a question. Is the autocomplete default or a plugin? It is default. It is yes. In just it is plain, default. Plain ordinary Obsidian. It has the autocomplete just working just straight out of the box. So what we see. Um, here in the stream right now is just a plain Obsidian with no plugins. So we'll add we'll add a couple of plugins uh, later in the stream, I think. But mm -hmm. yes, definitely this is straight out of the box. Great. All right. Um, so I, I think actually maybe it's worth covering the relationship part, right? Because at this point we've shown the link and the embedding. But I know one of my favorite features of Obsidian is being able to see how these things relate. So you want to talk a little bit about that? Oh now we've created these yes, <laughs> yes. Ah, oh, there is. Okay. So. Um, it is worth thinking of your note system as this um, this other brain, this kind of, uh, so there's the brain that you have, your, your own flesh brain, and then there's this other brain that is in your computer. And this brain that is in your computer is uh, more like your own brain than you may think. So um, a lot of the, um, your own brain, um, you don't actually have boxes in here. Like you don't actually have like rooms with doors and like um, fixed buckets where things are. Like you just, you have, a um, a lot of little things kind of like connected to each other uh, with, um, I've, I've completely forgotten my, my AI, <laughs> my AI <laughs> studies and stuff. There is a word uh, for that connection, but uh, yes, uh, little, lots of little things that all connect to each other. And Obsidian uh, is the same. And we can look at uh, these connections and we can kind of like explore these connections in a couple of different ways. So uh, Ben, um, I know you're just itching to show people I uh, diff the, diff the different kinds of graph uh, inside Obsidian. So maybe let's start with backlinks actually, because I think that might be oh. like the thing that most people might be most familiar with coming from either Notion or Rome, for example. Yeah, so I know that when I was um, in Evernote and OneNote, I did go through a lot of effort to kind of link notes to each other when I thought it was important. Mm -hmm. And um, the problem with that was, well, well, there's a bunch of problems with that, but uh, one of the big ones is that it was single direction. Like, so when you create a note from one place to another, another, you can see it from like, um, uh, if I write um, a link in this page that, say, that says, hey, link to Ben, and then I have this page called Ben, this page doesn't really have any awareness that it is being linked to. Whereas in Obsidian, uh, when you do that, uh, both pages are aware of each other uh, when you make that link. So uh, we can see here in this pane, Ben Hall. the right bar. Yeah, there's the right bar, and there's also the bottom status bar, too. That's true, right uh, here. Yes, yeah. So, uh, so I use the bottom status bar a lot, it sounds like. It sounds like you use the right bar more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you click um, this, this yeah. will automatically open the sidebar to this part right here. Yes, yeah. So we can see that uh, Ben Hong has been linked from the note called uh, Hung Su on a line that says chats with Ben Hong. And also another line uh, that has the 
uh, the quote, uh, the block in red. Yeah, so, yep, so these are the basic, uh, so this is the basic way to show that um, nodes are linked to each other. Uh, but what about this unlinked mention bit here? Oh, okay, yeah, let's, um, I don't think we've created uh, any unlinked mentions yet. Maybe we should make one just so we can yeah, uh, let's see do how it. this works. Yeah, so um, let's, uh, we could make a note for today's stream. In fact. Let's do it. Yeah, All right. so. So uh, learn uh, Obsidian with Hangsu, let's call it that. Great. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's make a list of attendees, maybe, okay. uh, or, 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 or hosts. We can call yeah, them, let's call do hosts. hosts. This is great. Yep. Yep, hosts. And we're going to just, just type out Hong Su and Ben Hong, and we are not going to link these. And then, fantastic. Okay, now if we go back to uh, Ben Hong or Hong Su. Hey, look at that. What's this? <laughs> Unlinked mentions. So this is kind of like the wonderful power of having uh, local notes that your your very powerful computer can pass through and uh, look at and do magical things for you. So uh, here you can see that Obsidian has uh, kind of like auto automatically detected, hey, you typed Hung Su over here and this note is called Hung Su. Did you mean to kind of like link these things together? And uh, we, we can uh, link it here if we like. Yeah. Or, or we don't. yeah. But I think it would make sense, right? In this case, right? It's like Hung Su was mentioned here. So if I click on the link yes. button, boom. Hey. So we go back to the Learn with Obsidian. Looks like it automatically updated that for us. We have square brackets right there. Yes, we have a working <laughs> link. Yes. And obviously, we can do the same with your name as well. Uh, yes, that's true. Yeah. So if we went back to Ben, we'll see that there's this unlinked mention here. So, you know, and I know for me, at least, this is really useful for processing things, like when you're exploring topics and figuring out where you had more sort of fluid thought and you hadn't spent the time to make the relationships. This is just so great when it comes to being able to just link these things together. Um, yeah. And, and, oh, I see a question. Um, oh, go for it. Yeah, so I see a question from Meg. Uh, do things slow down much if you have a lot of notes with links? So uh, this is a great question, and this is part of uh, the reason why I switched to Obsidian uh, from something similar called Dynalist. And um, the, the answer is Obsidian has been really uh, slick and quick for me with uh, hundreds of notes. I've heard of people with thousands, and they've been fine. Uh, so yep. I yes, yeah, so I came from uh, Dynalist, and I was linking things together. And I could, it was becoming unbearably slow. It was it was so slow that um, like um, I would open the app like on my phone, and I could I could expect maybe a minute, like for Oof. it to open up and be ready. Which like if you need a, a bit of information right now, like like you just can't put up with that. So yeah, a uh, huge advantage of local first and really good caching in Obsidian is that this stuff is really quick. Yeah, I mean, I think you hit an excellent point that's worth just talking about because I think a lot of fr frustrations people have with note-taking is they invest a lot of time in this system or a single app. And then what they find is that when it hits scale, right, to Meg's question, right, and they have thousands of notes, it's so slow, but then it's like you spend all this time building it and now a lot of times you're in vendor lock-in. I think that's one of the most, uh, for me, I found really frustrating with a lot of note-taking um, apps. Yeah, that's that's really it, isn't it? It feels a little bit like a kind of an abusive relationship. Like there are things that you need from your notes, but it's also kind of like hurting you with these terrible loading times with like all these other pains and aches and kind of thing. And you put up with those aches because you need the thing and it's just, oh, it, it, yes, we, we want to get people away uh, from the yeah. abusive relationships uh, with it, with their uh, um, uh, very, very slow note applications. Um, and so but, that's why I think one of the things worth mentioning, though, is that as you talk about, because we're managing just a series of markdown files, if Obsidian were to one day disappear and you didn't have a local copy, you still have your notes in like a usable format as opposed to it living in some sort of database file that like you now no longer have the keys to like understand how anything works. Whereas even with this, we can see here that the block reference that Obsidian created for us here in the embed shows up directly here as a reference so that even though you might not have the pretty UI of an automatic embed, you at least have the chance to make those relationships and connections again, which I think, um, which to me makes me feel a lot safer about Obsidian. I don't know about you, hung how you feel about that. Oh yeah, I totally feel the same way. I think um, I've talked a little in the past about, uh, I've experimented with other local first uh, note systems. And uh, one big turnoff is when the, 
uh, the storage method is proprietary. Like it's some some globby file that I cannot read with anything other than that application. But as you said, with Obsidian, since it's just plain Markdown, I can I've opened my notes up with VS Code uh, yep. with uh, any uh, any plain old Markdown editor, uh, even other note systems that use Markdown. Like you can often um, open up an Obsidian. A uh, pile of notes in those systems, and you can try opening up those systems in Obsidian <laughs> as well. Uh, that, that is the joy of trying to of just yeah, just it's just um, using Markdown. Yeah, great. Um, okay, I think. Okay, well, I think let's talk a little bit more about the we we got we I know we kind of detracted a bit from the relationships, but we wanted to show them graphs, right, Hungsu? Yes. Ah, yes. Let's let's so do graphs before we get to the next uh, another yes. round. Very beautiful. <laughs> All right, so so Hungsu, what do, I guess where would you like to start? Um, what which which node should we we start with? Should we just leave this yeah. one or? Um, okay, so I guess we can go to. Well, um, I, I was mentioning earlier, like sometimes I write notes about people because I want to do you know nice things with them or I want to do nice things for them. Uh, mm -hmm. So if we go if we go to your note, and, yeah, let's go to Ben. Uh, go to your so note. No, Ben Hong. Okay, and then uh, what? Uh, I may want to do is um, uh, open up a local graph. So actually, okay. oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Before we before we do that, if you could okay. uh, make a link for Funko Pop. Yes, uh, so if absolutely. You, if we, yeah, if we select Funko Pop, we do the little square brackets and we make, uh, yes, fantastic. Okay, and now if we do, um, if we open a local graph, so uh, there's a couple of different ways we can do this. And I guess the way we'll do right now, maybe we'll use the Obsidian command palette. Yeah, let's so, talk about that. Yeah, so um, for those of you who haven't used a command palette before, uh, it's um, something that can usually be brought up within an application with a shortcut. So I think in Obsidian's case on Mac, it is command P. P, and, yep. mm -hmm. Yeah, command P. I'm not sure if that's the same as VS Code on Mac, but um, uh, yeah, so there's yeah uh, many applications that um, have a command palette that lets you type out commands uh, in, um, uh, in well, uh, brokenish English uh, to do the things that you want. <laughs> so uh, let's try um, uh, asking the great Obsidian wizard for uh, a local graph. And All right, uh, so I'm just going to type graph. Oh, graph. Yeah, there we go. And we have, oh, <laughs> we have open graph, delete paragraph, and then open local graph, <laughs> which is kind of which is kind of funny. Uh, but we so in this case, I think we want a local graph. Uh, just Sounds for this good. Example. I'm going to yeah. hit enter. All right. Oh, look at this. Hey. Okay. So, um, let me let me change the display a bit. Actually. Yeah. Let's yeah. See. Let's arrows. Let's increase the node size, line thickness. All right. That's about as that. max as I can get it. I think. Beautiful. Text page yeah. threshold. Nope. Okay. This is. I think that's about as good as I can get it for now. Great. Okay. But yes, we have these uh, beautiful little bubbles and beautiful little connections. So we see that uh, Ben is connected to Star Wars, connected to Hong Su, connected to Learn with Obsidian, connected to Funko Pop. Uh, but um, I, I feel like I want to see uh, a little bit more. So okay. what we're seeing here is um, uh, a depth of one. So we're seeing only direct connections to Ben Hong. But mm. maybe we want to we see things that are maybe a little bit more indirect. So maybe let's play with the depth filter. Okay. How do we do yeah. that? So we okay, go in here. so let's yeah, let's open up filters, and then yeah, we see an option here for depth, and we see it's all the way to the left, with left, which is a depth of one. <laughs> oh man, uh, the, these these uh, little uh, tongue tw tongue twisters. So we're gonna change one to two. Okay, and that should give us something a little bit more interesting. So if we get back to the graph, and do we need neighbor looks, links turned on. Um. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe we need this so, one. So if I do this. Hey, look at that. Okay. So, um, the reason I wanted to bring this up is because I wanted it um to kind of visualize who are all the people who like Star Wars. Oh, we can kind of see that. We see that Ben and Hung Su are both connected to Star Wars. We can kind of see that. Um, see this right here. So, um, the way that I use this in my own notes, like I might have, um, say, well, you, for instance, and a bunch of other people, I have not just a list of things that these people like, I have a list of games that people like, and then I could kind of connect people by um, 
the games that they mutually like and then organize sessions where, hey, uh, all of you like the same game, let's play this game together. Um, and um, in the case of this uh, Star Wars, um, if I know a bunch of people who are also into Star Wars, sometimes they can give me ideas for mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, interesting things to talk about, like other books to read, like um, interesting uh, kinds of uh, Star Wars art. Like, you know, there's uh, so many different things that we can do. Uh, with these connections but yes so that is local graph um and yeah we uh, uh we can probably we could play with this a little more but um actually uh, uh that, there's so much to talk about uh, isn't <laughs> there is. yeah um uh, well, so we've... maybe one thing worth mentioning within the graph though is that i know that especially for those who haven't used graph view to sort of basically visualize their notes before is that um, we actually covered this a little bit here, but you notice within the filter, you can actually search within the files so that when you have more nodes, we can filter it down to basically, for example, if we only wanted notes related to Hangzhou, you'll see that it actually updates the live graph and then only the things that are related to Hangzhou kind of stay in place. Um, so it's just something to know that like this thing is very dynamic as far as what you can do with it, um, which is super nice. Yeah. And, oh, I do see, <laughs> I do see some questions coming in. Yeah, um, let's do it. Yeah, so, okay, what do we have? Okay, uh, I see a big one from Mr. Peanut Butter. Um, okay, so it is one of the ideas I found interesting from reading about the Zettelkasten method. Do we want to talk a little bit about Zettelkasten method before we go forward? Yeah, I think so. It might be because this is yeah. kind of an important paradigm that's been kind of taking hold of the note-taking community. Yeah, so um, obviously, um, okay, so I, I'll stop saying obviously because obviously. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> for for some people in the community, Zettelkasten may be a totally new term that doesn't mean anything. So uh, Zettelkasten is a German word um, uh, translated literally. It means uh, note box, I think. Yep. And uh, it's referring to, uh, I guess, the ancestor of what we're doing here with Obsidian. Um, this uh, lovely German researcher, uh, Nicholas Luhmann, uh, uh, he didn't have a computer, but he knew that he wanted to connect um, his notes and ideas together. So yes, that is him. And uh, he didn't have a computer, he didn't have Obsidian, but he wanted to connect notes, how to do it. Uh, he did it with uh, slips of paper in boxes and those slips of paper had IDs written on them. And um, uh, in his writing, uh, if he wanted to just you know make a reference to another note, he would write down the ID of the, of, of the other uh, related note. And uh, he would organize his boxes in a way um, by the ID so that if he looked at the ID, he would know which box to look at to find um, that note. So that is uh, Zettel Karsten. That's the guess the ancestry of Zettel Karsten. And um, one of the other big ideas of uh, Zettel Karsten method is that um, one note or one slip of paper uh, or one file uh, should have uh, just one idea or just one purpose. And uh, this is really important for so many reasons, um, uh, which uh, uh, we, we can get into uh, more as we go along. But I want to get back to uh, um, maybe answering Mr. Peanut Butter's question. Yeah, let's do so, it. okay, so he's asking, um, notes have a hierarchy, uh, parent-child relationship, and you can gain insights from the hierarchy. I haven't found a good way to do that in Obsidian uh, do you all have uh, do anything to create that? Is that oversold? Not that useful. Um, uh, well, it uh, it does have some value. Uh, certainly, um, I it is. Uh, well, um, I, I I do think in this way sometimes. So I do think in terms of like parent child, I go from um, a parent note down into like child notes, and then I go back up. But because uh, I know that for me, I do this so much that I don't really think much about parent child relationship much anymore. So uh, by, by parent child relationship, what, what, what could that be? Uh, so say, for instance, so I'm a UI engineer, I think a lot about JavaScript. So I might have a parent of JavaScript, and then I might have children things like DOM manipulation or a uh, uh, different kinds of uh, um, uh, data and string manipulation or, or fetching things with Ajax, those things go underneath uh, JavaScript. And then I might have more children underneath that. Um, and uh, so there is that relationship, but uh, that relationship to me hasn't uh, been all that 
useful. Uh, I just, um, I think, okay, I need some JavaScript thing. I need to know about more about Ajax. I go to the thing about Ajax. I don't, I'm not thinking too much about the, that parent child relationship, but I think it is possible. Um, so I know that in this graph, we have directional arrows. So you can see when uh, one thing is uh, linking to another. Uh, I'm not sure if that answers your question though, uh, Mr. Peanut Butter. And also I'm not sure if you have any thoughts on the parent child relationship uh, in Obsidian, Ben. Yeah, I think it, it's a tricky thing, right? Because as you mentioned, we're most, most of us are used to this folder hierarchy um, for organizing things. And I think we talk about, but I talk a lot about this in like coding workshops too, when we talk about component development, which a lot of us are familiar with as developers. And um, with notes though, as we can see though, because it's often very three-dimensional in the sense that like it, believe it or not, what makes I think note writing tricky is that the context in which you write it when you first create it is often not the way it is when you want to fetch it later. And so for that reason, like I found that the parent child was almost a little bit more, like it's good to like start out because like setting out those explicit relationships, but then beyond that, letting it be flexible and grow organically because JavaScript might also want to be related to other things like machine learning, but it might be front end, right? And front end and machine learning are kind of actually two different areas, but they're now two different axes of like knowledge bases, right? And so leave, like, I think what's nice about this kind of uh, graph uh, modeling of notes is that it allows you to organically scale without feeling like, oh no, I have to like take everything out of folders and like, do I put the JavaScript note in a, in a front end folder and then copy it over to a, a machine learning folder? Like you don't have to worry about that because that's all managed like through like the power of software. So that's kind of my two cents on it. Yeah. And uh, we can even talk a little more about that stuff about, um, oh, it, uh, about folders and organizing with notes. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I know that a lot of people are probably very used to um, uh, thinking of organization uh, folder first, uh, but uh, once you start playing with Obsidian, I think uh, what I really like to see is people organizing note first, like your notes are the, um, the unit information and, and also uh, the way that we organize things. And mm -hmm. we do this uh, with, I guess, um, there's a bunch of different words for this. You call these, hub notes, you call them map notes. Uh, you might have heard of some other ones, uh, Ben, but um, uh, there's, I guess you call it table of contents notes. Uh, but I think um, I think these kinds of notes are a little bit more special. So- uh, Why don't we create one for everyone show them what that yeah. what you mean by that? Yeah, yeah. So, um, okay. So we, um, we were just talking about uh, JavaScript, like we could make um, uh, uh, a group note, a hub note uh, for JavaScript. So we can um, ask the almighty Obsidian Oracle, do you have anything about JavaScript? And uh, no, it doesn't, but we can create um, a note for JavaScript. Yep, so this could be the parent or a hub uh, of JavaScript. And uh, what things might we wanna talk about uh, inside JavaScript? Uh, we may wanna talk about um, uh, major JavaScript frameworks, for example, like we could create a, a little heading for frameworks or we can create even a note for frameworks. Like there's so many different ways that we can do this. So if, mm -hmm. if we create a note for frameworks, then inside the note for frameworks, if we click on through, we can then uh, start making reference to other frameworks like Vue and React and Marco and Svelte and like all yeah. the other, yeah. So, so now we are, um, and it is so great, Ben, that you have the graph open while we do this so that people can see um, why um, it is so powerful to think in terms of notes as the organization tool and not folders. So, um, so everyone should hopefully notice that when we created each of these pages, like we didn't have to stop and go over to the folder and think, which folder do I put this in? And this is so common, I think, um, I, I think it's, maybe worst in a uh, group wiki environments. So like if you're, if you're sharing notes with like um, a, quite a big team, then obviously then you, you do need to think a little bit about this stuff, but there's, there's this anxiety around, oh, where do I put this note? Where's the best place to put it? And, uh, and it, it, it's well-founded fear because uh, sometimes there is a cost to um, moving the note later. So you really need to get it right the first time. But uh, in Obsidian, that really, doesn't matter. You can put it wherever you want, and uh, you can just uh, link to it directly, uh, as long as you know um, uh, the name uh, of the note. So that may, may be something worth talking a little bit about as well, which is uh, note naming. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that um, 
uh, for a while, I'd never really thought much of um, my notes as a search engine. And I think this is something that uh, I would really like um, those of you on the stream to start thinking of, if you haven't already. Uh, I think all of us uh, have to use uh, Google or whatever as a part of our uh, day job, probably many times a day. And uh, in fact, uh, I've, I think I just saw a comment from someone uh, in another thread saying that they had 500 tabs open because uh, they, and, and they and they said that they needed those 500 tabs for, for whatever problem that was. Uh, I, I do not envy that problem, but um, yes, so we, we need search to uh, solve our problems, but we keep turning to this external search as um, the source of um, our answers. And I would like people to start turning to their own notes um, as a potential source of their answers. And for that to work, uh, your notes need to <laughs> need to have a little search engine optimization. You're going to need to do a little bit of SEO on your own notes. And um, what all that means is your notes need to have good titles. So um, we have some pretty good titles here. We have React Views, Belt, and Angular. And these are things that you probably would search for uh, if you um, were looking for things. these things uh, in your own uh, note system. But um, maybe there's some other things that uh, uh, you might search for. Uh, you might search for something like, say, um, uh, uh, starting a brand new app with Vue, for instance. Um, yeah, so we, we could try uh, making something like that. So this is uh, this is classically something that you'd probably still turn to Google for, but uh, I'm good. We'll, we'll use that as an example here. So uh, if we, um, yes, if we query this and we make a note, let's call it, say, uh, yeah, starting a new app with Vue. Okay, and we create the note. Um, and uh, the reason why I um, express the title out in this way in natural English is because um, uh, when you're searching, when you have a problem, uh, you, you do tend to search with um, you know, a, a bunch of different words. So, um, uh, so some of the keywords that I made sure to use here, we said starting, we said new, we said app, and we said view. I, I don't think we would need, oh, actually, you know what? Uh, we, we could use some other words here and we can talk a little bit about metadata, I think, Ben. Yeah, yeah. Fun matter might be a good time to get into this. Yeah, so uh, Obsidian notes uh, su support um, uh, metadata at the beginning of the note or, or actually, or they can be anywhere, uh, right Ben? It can be anywhere, uh, but front matter yeah. needs to be at the front. That, okay. that yeah. is a four standard. Yeah, okay. So. Um, at this, uh, okay, we are going to create an alias uh, for this note. Um, so, uh, yep. So, uh, I believe alias uh, is it alias or is it aliases? Uh, ben, I, I've I think done I've always... just alias. Have you done aliases? Yeah. So, uh, oh, yeah, so, interesting. Yeah. So we, we can get into this a little bit. So yeah, we'll do aliases, and aliases accepts an array. Um, so yeah, markdown syntax the... or front matter syntax. YAML. YAML. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Or um, did you did you were you able to do it like this? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can do well, it. Yeah, ignore me. Yeah. <laughs> I learned something today. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, so this is the way that this is the way that I've been doing it. And um, it sounds like you've been doing it differently, Ben. But um, yeah, so aliases, yep, we put a little array, yes, with a string. And uh, if we could create an alias, let's call it uh, creating a new app with you. And is there maybe a different synonym that you would think of uh, for app, Ben? Is there uh, something else that fu future self might search for? No, I think that's actually how I would probably search for this, honestly. Okay, sure. Okay, so now that we've done this, let's um, let's close this panel and let's query okay. our Obsidian Oracle and let's see how well this alias worked. So let's do um, let, let's try searching for create. Let's see if that worked. Hey, look at that! Yeah, and this is really important. Um, at, and one of the regular pains of um, a note system that you use for many years. So I'm sure all, uh, many of you in this channel have been using your note systems for three, five, 10, 15 or more years. Uh, sometimes it's hard to bring up um, stuff that you haven't used in a while. So it is good to give yourself uh, multiple ways to uh, find the things that you created. So we are able to find this note by searching for um, starting a new app. We can find it by searching for create a new app. Uh, we could create another way to get to this. We could link to this note from the view note, 
uh, that, that gives you another way to find the app. So what we want to do in a very successful long-term note system is have um, retrieval redundancy. You want multiple ways to get to a place. And um, uh, you're trying to write for your future self who uh, may not be as good at um, a thing as the, the, the you of today. Like the, the, the you of the future may, may have well uh, forgotten a lot of these things. So yes, yeah, so if we make a, a link to uh, starting a new app with view from the view note, uh, hey, look at that lovely autocomplete. And oh, I think we have, um, hey, do you want to talk a little, Ben, about this little feature? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I know that I don't, for all you all, a lot of times what you name the note is not necessarily what you want to call it where you're referencing it. And that's always been rather difficult to do, right, with Markdown, um, because you basically are stuck with the original note title. And so um, I believe this is Obsidian specific. They introduced a single pipe operator as a way of basically offering an alternative way of whatever is being written. So if we look at the render preview, so the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to use the command palette to split, the, split it vertically. And I'm going to turn this on to preview mode so we can see basically a live update here. You'll see that create a new app is what's actually being rendered on the page. And then so obviously the raw markdown, you see everything in the source. But if we update this right now to say like, this is cool, you'll see that the link is automatically populated. Um, and so this is one of the things I love about this, because again, if we're saying like, if we're making a lot of this, like I learn how to, you know, create a new view app, you might want to be able to just have this lowercase rather than uppercase. And that way it actually looks like a proper sentence. Um, but you're still referencing the note uh, that you want to point to. And I think that flexibility is, uh, I, I love it so much. Um, but as we can show earlier though, with the alias, it can auto-complete that uh, whatever's alternate thing that's being shown here. So that's why you see that starting a new view app is the original note title. And this is the, uh, basically your, your pre-configured alias that you can use for later on. Yeah, okay. We've been talking for a while. I feel like- We I've have. We should- Neglecting the chat. <laughs> let's talk to the ch yes. Let's look at the chat. Um, the first one, I think, the, at least the one next one I see from Meg, is uh, oh okay. It looks like Meg's question. Oh wait, no. Actually, which one? Did you... Oh okay, I'm seeing it from um, from Trust Codes. Uh, does okay. Obsidian do anything fancy for images? Can we just show them images, Hansu. Oh yes. Okay, sure. Um, so we so maybe need I'll to grab, grab the view logo, maybe. Sure. Yeah. Let's do that. Actually. For this one. Uh, what are we gonna do? I wonder. Well, I, I actually wondered if you could find an image that is quite big, uh, so that we can start okay. playing with image sizes. Or, Ooh. or, um, actually, you know what? Uh, no, we we can do view. Like we, this, this okay. can work with the view logo. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Let's do it. All right. So I'm gonna uh, look up the view logo, and we're gonna go ahead and save this locally first, uh, just like on the desktop, basically, is what I'm saying. So let me grab. So I have a question yeah. for you, Ben. Uh, yeah. So. One feature I use a lot in Obsidian is that I just paste images uh, straight into it, and then they, they get stored locally in the vault. So I copy the image to my clipboard, and I paste it straight into uh, oh, Obsidian. Let's show and, them that then. Yeah, so this saves me a lot of time. I'm not sure if this works the same in Mac, and I, I just wonder if it does. So yeah, if you copy image, so if okay, you're copying, copy image. So, so the image is, image is in the clipboard. Not it yep. shouldn't not it should not be a link to the image. It should be the image. So if we go right. back to Obsidian, yeah, yep. I, I just wonder if this works. So this, unfortunately, at this time looks like uh, it's copying this, the wrong. This looks like it's by reference. Yeah. Okay. But uh, we, this starts by answering Alex's question a bit, which is that this is the standard. Uh, well, yeah, this is the standard actually image syntax for Markdown. Exclamation yes. point, which is, says you're embedding something, your yes. alt text, and then your URL. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So that didn't work uh, quite as I wanted. So we might have you store that image file locally yeah, so we can do the that things locally. that we were about to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. So I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to do view logo. And All another right. thing, Ben, your, yep. your image clipper, uh, your little draw, little clippy thing. Does that clip straight to your clipboard? Uh, it does, but you know what I, I realized my Alfred might actually be, I realized, let me look at the settings for Alfred. I might've prevented Alfred from saving the image in the clipboard. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can change that real quick. Keep images. Maybe this is actually the problem. 
So hold on, let's try this one more time. So this is yeah. copy the image, go into Obsidian. No, so I'll need to figure out, I, I, I yeah. might have something interfering okay. with it, to be honest. So I don't want to blame yeah. Mac just yet. Yeah, yeah um, sure. Okay, so that's Let's go file. ahead right is here. Is that in your vault? That... Okay. Nope, not. So this is just in my regular desktop. It's not in the vault yet. So if we drag and drop it in, we'll... hey. what do we see? So one, it's now in our note, and Obsidian has automatically added it inside of the vault. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. So there's a bunch of different things uh, that we can do here. So let's, um, uh, let's, well, let's maybe change the size uh, okay. of the image. How do we do that? Uh, yeah. So, yep. You've put the cursor in the exact right place. We want to do pipe and then we want the width and pixels of what we want. So, um, that, yep, yeah, it's 300 and hey, look at that little preview. Yeah, it is now smaller. So this, <laughs> uh, this I use a lot because I have a lot of um, emoji GIFs uh, in my Obsidian Vault and um, I, I like to store them in quite high quality, but if I have them at their original size, like let's say 256 or 512, it is too big to be, <laughs> an it's too big to be an emoji in my notes. Yeah. So I might, so I'll pipe it down to like uh, 16 or 32. Or something yep. like this yeah but um the other thing i want to talk a little bit about is i guess um so there is a um uh, this is a good reason to have folders is um yeah. to store uh the, these kinds of um uh, rich media so we can yeah. try configuring obsidian a little bit to put Let's all media into a folder yeah so i'll go and go in my preference which i'm going to click the setting button here yep little cog icon and okay. then take the File and links. Yes, files and links. And then we have, yes, uh, we have default location for new notes. And then we should have a default location for, yes, new attachments. Uh, so we can do, yep, in, let's say, a folder specified below. Um, and oh, we might need to make that folder first. Um, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, yeah. So we just call it like assets? Sure. Okay, or let's call it images, actually. Let's be more direct. Yeah, I've called it embeds in mine uh, because I have all kinds of rich stuff that is not necessarily oh, images in mine. Okay, I like yeah. that. Let's call it embeds. Yeah. So we can see here, we haven't, we've done a lot of keyboard shortcuts, but the left file is kind of your, basically like your standard window explorer. So you can see here, we can still manage things here on the left-hand side. Uh, so that is totally available to you. Yeah. So, so I'm going to go ahead so... and delete this now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so the... In case anyone's wondering, so I have mine called embeds because you can do things like uh, embed PDFs uh, in your Obsidian notes, and you can uh, read the you can read the PDF from inside an Obsidian note. So, so if you have uh, like ebooks or little papers, or mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah all, there's all kinds of rich media that are supported by Obsidian. Yeah. Yep. So I'm going to go back in here, um, and let's go and configure that to mm -hmm. go into embeds. And you see, actually, there's even an autocomplete now. It shows all the different hey. folders that already exist. So great, I'm just gonna click that. Um, so let's let's do the same thing from before, right? Let's grab the view logo. And Drag and drop. drop it in. All right. And so we'll see now that embeds did get placed in view logo. That is great. Um, and then I realized, Alex, uh, so you might notice that this embed is slightly different from the image URL we saw earlier, uh, as far as the markdown syntax. And that's because uh, Wikilinks is a popular way of just shortening the amount of like cruft that you normally would have inside of your markdown file. So you can see here when you're referencing an internal asset that uh, Obsidian knows where it is, we usually use the double the wiki link, which is the double square bracket. So I just wanted to clarify that for those wondering. Oh, I see an uncomfortable question, but it needs to be answered. <laughs> okay, go for it. Oh boy. Okay, so Meg asks, um, the one thing that's holding me back from the switch <laughs> from Notion to Obsidian is that I love their databases and corresponding displays. Is there any way to mimic that in Obsidian? Um, uh, you, you're not, you're not going to get the richness of different yeah. views of Obsidian in, uh, sorry, of, of um, Notion in Obsidian. And uh, that has been a real sticking point for uh, Ben and myself. Uh, I mean... But so kind of so okay I, I let me i'll i i've done a lot of so for those who don't know i do a lot of work with notion and obsidian and uh, love notion for a lot of what it is 
And so I think the number one thing that Notion has overall is like the, the ease of UI editing. And so for those who have used Notion's like tables and which are essentially databases, it's so easy to click and drag and drop and switch to different views. That is currently not native to <laughs> Obsidian, but I don't know, Hongsu, if you've had a chance to play with this, but Obsidian data view is, um, oh, here it is. This is a plugin I've actually been using on my own vault. And so we're gonna jump a little bit ahead on this. I think it's worth, uh, I know we have about 20 minutes, 25 minutes left. Oh, and so what it allows flies. you to do, <laughs> I know, doesn't it? Um, is it allows you to specify this, uh, basically this block and you see that it's the triple backtick code block. And so when it's a data view, you can basically query against your notes. And so the thing here in this particular case is that you're telling it, um, the syntax here is like what the format is. So in this case, it's a table. I think they also have a list and I forgot the other one, but list and table are the two I've used the most. And then here are time played length and rating. These are attributes that come from the front matter of your title. So where we defined alias. So if I switch back real quick, um, let's say on view, right? We could like define properties on this to be like, you know, language is a property. In this case, we'll call it JavaScript. So in this case, like you would query against all the meta properties of front language and that would show up in your table as a column. So that's how that's, that's correlated. Um, as you can see, this gives you at least some sort of like view, um, but, it, but to Hung Su's point, it doesn't have the level of like uh, UI prettiness when it comes to being able to switch to Kanban and those things, uh, at least at this time. Yes, that's what I'll yeah. say. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, so we are, we're getting by. We, uh, obviously, Ben and I miss uh, the, the power that uh, Notion has. But uh, yeah. with um, Obsidian's very rapidly growing uh, plugin database, uh, we are finding uh, all kinds of other ways to um, uh, continue to organize um, some of our, our things in Obsidian, and th the sting is getting smaller. So, but uh, maybe it's worth now talking a little bit about plugins because we really haven't talked much about personalization with Obsidian, which I think is a huge oh, selling point. It is, yes. So, okay. So let's, um, well, let's start browsing, I guess, uh, some of the, um, some of what's available, and yeah. we can talk. Yeah. So let's go to our little preferences cog, and. That's good. Um, we can see how easy it is to start having a bit of a look around. So, um, oh, I guess we, do, oh, oh you there's core plugins. Oh. Yeah, and we might need to talk okay. a little bit about the core plugins uh, since they, I, yeah, so I think they're not on by default. Okay. Um, yeah, I know I have a lot of them on uh, for me, but um, yeah, let's quickly check um, which things might not be on and which things might be worth talking about. So- Tags, um, we haven't talked about tags at all. There was a question about that earlier. Yeah, okay, yeah, this is a kind of a big thing. So um, yeah, we can go ahead and enable this tag pane while we're talking about tags because um, Obsidian does tags like maybe a bit differently from um, a lot of other places. So um, one um, big shift I've made in the last few years is the idea of inline tags rather than page level tags or rather than note level tags. So um, uh, so if any of you, um, oh, well, 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 maybe we'll, we'll um, We'll, we'll teach by showing. Let's let's show yeah, people let's an yeah. Let's show people an inline tag, and we'll uh, kind of uh, get get into why that might be um, uh, preferred for some people. So um, yeah, so we have um, yeah we have a view note. Uh, we have uh, oh okay but yes that yes, what you this, want to yes we have this an inline tag. So you add tags to your notes by just typing them out typing them out kind of like uh, writing a tweet. Uh, uh, um, uh, or, or, or writing, a, I guess, uh, almost all social media these days, right? You you add mm -hmm. tags to it with a hashtag um, at the beginning and uh, the name of the tag that you want. And now that we have this um, uh, tag JavaScript, uh, let's uh, let's take a look at the tag pane, and we should uh, see it there. So um, it might be that is, is it on the right now? It is. I think by right default there. it's on the right. Yes, we have this little yeah. tab for tags. I'm gonna hey. drag it over here. Yes. So that I think is worth showing that like this is one of the things about Obsidian I love is basically everything's customizable to where you would prefer. So just to show you, like for example, I tend to keep the tags here because to me they're kind of like folders in this regard, like a browsing thing. So for me, I keep that over here. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so for those of you who are developers um, and you start playing with Obsidian, you may notice, I think it's a .obsidian folder 
uh, in yeah, your let's... in your pile of notes. And inside that folder, I think is a workspace file, and that file describes uh, what Ben just showed you, which is a the, the layout. It, 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 it describes like the, the files that you have open, where you've moved your tabs. Uh, I think um, uh, yeah, and I think there's another file for um, the plugins that you have enabled. So uh, so we've enabled the uh, tag pane plugin, we can see that there is a JavaScript tag with one note, uh, one result. Uh, so if we uh, make, um, I don't know, if we tag something else with JavaScript, let's say uh, if we go, go to, to React. Yeah. Ah, here we oh, go. Oh, this so, is not open yet. Yeah. Yeah. So we have not created the page yet. So we'll, we'll maybe talk a little bit about this. So actually, if you go to the JavaScript note, I think, yep. or, or sorry, the JavaScript frameworks note, yep. which is where the yeah. Um, okay. So uh, we haven't created these yet. We just made these links. Um, uh, could you actually open up the uh, local graph, uh, Ben? Yeah. Let me yeah. do that. Uh, da, 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 command P, local yeah. graph. Yes. Ask Boom. the Obsidian wizard. Show me the graph. And yes. <laughs> okay. And uh, so this we're looking at the default Obsidian theme here. But uh, so the the contrast is not too great. So I'm, I'm so sorry if you can't see this. Should we try to switch but, the theme, maybe, Hongzhu, real quick? You know that, what? Why that not? Be hard. Yeah, let's, that be yeah hard. sure. Let's do that now. Yeah, let's uh, let's go into um, uh, appearance. Yeah, and let's uh, let's actually let's uh, browse the community theme. Yeah, let's browse some. Uh, yeah, let's just browse some. Um, and so, by the way, when we're talking about personalization, this is one of the things I think is worth mentioning. Uh, is that everything in Obsidian, if if you think you can want to customize it, it's basically possible. And so, I don't know, this is like might have good contract. Should we go for like Obsidian, Nord? Um, yeah, let, let's give that a try. That's that's probably okay. good enough. Let's yeah. use this one. All and right. I'll make a little note as well for yeah, any, new, any new devs who are on the stream. Uh, if any of you have ever felt like you want to make a contribution to open source, but you felt kind of intimidated, like it was like too much to do, like or like um, like the standards are too high for contributing to open source or that kind of thing. One of the easiest ways that you can get in is to make a theme. Uh, you, uh, mm -hmm. So I very recently made uh, a theme for Obsidian and contributed to that contributed that to the Obsidian repo, and it was it's probably one of the easiest commits I've ever done. It, it's very very easy. <laughs> so yeah, any new devs if you want to get your feet wet on open source. A theme for Obsidian, very easy. Um, okay, so we have a different theme now. We have um, on oh, the contrast, and this is probably still not too great, but that that's yeah. okay. We can, we can still talk about this. Yep. Yeah. So we have these different color bubbles. So we have a white bubble for JavaScript frameworks, and we have a white bubble for Vue, and then we have these kind of like grayed out bubbles for uh, Svelte and Angular. So as you may have guessed, uh, the grayed out bubble is for a node that has been referenced but not created yet. So this is another way that we can create a note is I think we can just click on um, Svelte or Angular and hey, we have now made this note. So um, yeah, so, so creating notes is so quick and so easy uh, inside of CD. It gives you so many different ways uh, to do it. Uh, but uh, it, um, uh, for the situation just now uh, we, that we were in, it, you need to make sure that you've uh, made the note. So, okay, so now that we are inside the Svelte note, we can add, I guess we can add a JavaScript tag. So we'll type um, and we'll see that, oh yes, that's, look how quick that was. So uh, I didn't even see that, I didn't, I, I'm pretty sure you used autocomplete. Yeah, uh, I just used the autocomplete. Yeah, so the stream for me was so fast that I didn't even see the little uh, drop down. I just saw you <laughs> type the hashtag and then like JavaScript just appeared. But uh, yeah, as as you've all seen in Obsidian, there's autocomplete everywhere. It's very handy. It's very fast. It, it, yeah, it's wonderful. Um, so that is the basics of inline tagging. Ben, do you want to talk a little bit about hierarchical tagging? Yeah. So one of the things that Obsidian added recently um, to its feature is that you can actually basically have true like the parent-child relationship. So in the event, uh, for example, with JavaScript, we, maybe as a parent tag, this is actually too high because we mentioned like machine learning versus like front end, right? And so maybe what instead we want is to have a front end tag. And sure. then within that is the JavaScript. And so you'll see here actually now, and I'll just do machine learning JavaScript. And so using the uh, forwards, uh, no wait, this is backslash. Um, you'll see that this is basically the syntax for distinguishing between a parent and a child. And you'll actually see over here on the left-hand side that this is how you can see the hierarchical relationship, which is like 
front end to JavaScript, machine learning to JavaScript. Um, now, I would comment that one of the things I have learned is that it's really easy to get into the parent-child relationship, but then you get too deep in the hole. <laughs> and if, for example, right, it's kind of weird to have a bunch of uh, front-end JavaScript, machine learning JavaScript, when what would probably make more sense is to compose tags together. So we think of this like from our, like just from coding, right, and refactoring. It would make more sense to have your lines composed of a front. So when you're searching files, you're looking for front end and JavaScript rather than having to tie directly to like a. And so this is here, you can see your your tags are much cleaner now. And I don't think we're going to have time for search today, but Obsidian search is quite powerful. So you can compose things together to be like, look for all the notes that contain front end and JavaScript. And then that way you'll only see your, for example, your front end JavaScript notes versus your machine learning JavaScript notes, for example. Yes. Yeah. We can search for tags. We can search for text. We can search for not tags as well, mm -hmm. which is uh, super handy as well. Um, yes. There's uh, so much to go into and also so many questions uh, that we haven't been answering. Yes. Um, let's keep going. Yeah, what, what's, yeah. what's in the chat? Let's see. Okay. Um, uh, I see one from Anna that I can, uh, is front matter a markdown or obsidian specific thing? Um, oh, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, it's, so it's technically a YAML format. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, um, I know that my other, my other markdown readers, when I open up an obsidian markdown file with YAML in it, it just, it doesn't look, they don't bother uh, looking at the YAML. Um, mm -hmm. so it, in that sense, it is uh, obsidian specific, but if you had a markdown reader that also read the YAML, it would read the YAML. <laughs> yeah, and so to build on what Hongsu is saying, basically it is a bit of a hybrid in that front matter is standard from like a syntax perspective and like a, you know, other places using it. But then Obsidian actually is in the midst of figuring out how they'll use it to its fullest extent. So actually we showed you aliases earlier. That functionality is definitely specific because Obsidian is using that specific property to then allow us to reference it in a different name in different places. But uh, just know that Obsidian is thinking about different ways to sort of leverage that standard and then um, extending on its functionality in the UI. Yeah. Um, okay. So I think, oh, are we actually caught up on questions? That's amazing. Um, uh, okay. Let's see. I think so. Okay. If we missed the question, please go ahead, chat, drop it in the bottom. Um, this has been so great. Um, yeah, this is super great. Uh, do, do, do we see, uh, yeah, the auto sync gift from our, uh, Maxime dev. Yes. That's, I don't know. Hansu, do you use the sync Git plugin? I actually don't. Yeah. Okay. Um, you don't. Know, that's I right. Think, you and I, I think do I saw that you talked about it on Tuesday. Um, yeah, we did talk a little bit. Um, so yeah, if you just go to obsidian Git, basically it can automatically, you can tell it how often to push up to GitHub. And so maybe this is worth quickly, um, maybe covering in like a, a couple minutes. Cause I know, oh my gosh, the time has really flown. Um, backing up your notes. I think that's actually a really important thing to talk about. <laughs> so Hang Su, how do you, how do you manage your note backup and then I share mine? Yeah. So I am super dorky and I love Linux servers and stuff. So, uh, I set up, um, a private VPS over in Seattle, uh, that runs, um, uh, this little. Um, this little app called sync thing. So that little VPS over in, uh, over in Seattle has, has a copy of, of my notes. And it also synchronizes my notes, uh, with my laptop and uh, my phone over here. So it's super dorky, <laughs> nice. super over, over, over complicated at uh, everyone in the chat. You don't need to do that. You can, you can, you can, uh, I, I did it because I wanted to, uh, but I'm sure, uh, Ben's solution that he's about to tell you, it will work just fine. <laughs> Yeah, so um, the way I did it, I went the much, uh, yeah, I, I used the third party services, particularly Dropbox. Um, so uh, my second brain lives in a Dropbox folder, but then because I'm paranoid, I have a secondary backup, which is a, basically a private GitHub repo. And so I have basically two points of failure um, rather than the one. And, uh, but again, it's basically up to you um, on how you want to do it. But just know that because it is just a folder of text files, however you prefer to back up your files, that's up to you. You get a choice. Um, which is super nice. Um, I think we have a, Kun, Kunboje has, uh, is it 
Does it have a button for open an external editor like Vim or Sublime? Is it possible to edit file in other editors? Hunks, you want to take that one? I don't use this feature much. Um, I know that uh, Obsidian lets you open uh, a file in uh, your OS's uh, whatever na uh, native application is for that. Yeah, yeah, you found it. Yeah, there you go. Open in default app. Um, I, I don't use it, uh, but it is it is there. Yeah, and so to like on the second part of your question is that yes, because these are just markdown files. Obsidian is just like if you think about it, like oh, that's not what I want to do. Let's go with that. Um, it's a UI extension on the text file. So yes, if you want to use Vim, Sublime Code, um, VS Code, it's all there. Um, and you can still edit things normally. So for example, I still use like Sublime Text or VS Code to do mass text replacements um, because it's just more performant on those um, uh, particular software. But otherwise, um, yeah, that's the answer to that. See oh, there are about... Vim key bindings in Obsidian for those who are Vim fans. Oh. So that is a thing. Do you want to add uh, the one for Meg? Um, yeah, so Meg, can you save more than one graph view like we adjusted it with the filter? Um, uh, I don't do this, but I'm pretty sure you can favorite um, uh, a yeah. particular graph view. So I think we ne might need to enable a plugin for that, Ben. Um, OK, sounds good. Yeah. I'll go into my pro so core plugins. Yeah, I think for that we need the start plugin. I think. Okay. So these are for searches, I believe. Uh, okay. Searcher. Yeah. Is this a, actually Ben? Is this a feature that you use? I don't actually use the graph view that much. Um, I it's, Meg, that is a great question. Um, to Hung Su's point, I I think I've wanted to do this a couple of times, but at this moment I haven't. I don't have a good workflow for saving the graph view. Um, there is something though that's worth um maybe mentioning for those the workspaces are a thing. Um, although maybe that's a plugin that I need to turn on. Uh, I could have sworn Obsidian has workspaces built in, and maybe, yes, My here we account. go. Okay. Yeah, here it is. So, um, the other thing is that you can save like different layouts for different modes. So for those who might've used like Photoshop and other things in the past, like depending on your writing mode, you might want certain things open. And so. Obsidian lets you save those workspaces so you can basically switch from like coding mode to maybe like writing mode to art mode, whatever makes sense to you, um, which is worth mentioning. Um, gosh, uh, there is something important I did want to mention from next question about Notion though. We talked a bit about plugins because I know we're starting to run out of time. Um, Obsidian, for those who don't know, is an Electron app. So its core thing is basically TypeScript. And so if you look at a lot of the plugins the way they're written, there actually is an, an API, it is in beta. So, but basically all these things that you see here are just UI extensions on top of like Obsidian's API. So there are people who've built like calendar widgets that automatically open specific notes for those who know like the daily note concept. And the reason why I was saying to the notion thing earlier, there's nothing stopping us from building a UI interface that would allow us to then update our notes. It's just that hasn't been done yet. So that's why a lot of my things like not yet, because I imagine as more people, as once the API becomes more formalized, we're gonna see a lot more explorations around those things. Um, and so I thought something worth mentioning as far as customization goes. Yeah, uh, there's, um, oh, there's so many plugins that we could, uh, get into. I know that the calendar one that you mentioned is a kind of a core part of uh, my daily workflow. I'm using that mm -hmm. multiple times every single day. Um, we uh, uh, is it worth getting into that really quickly? Because I actually feel yeah, like uh, the daily so. note is kind of a core part of uh, the the Obsidian workflow. So, All right. so I'm um, going to turn on the core, the daily note plugin first. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. we'll need the community plugin. So as usual, you have the um, opt into this. So yeah. I'm going to go ahead and browse for the calendar widget, which is, as you can see, the most popular one. Yes. So I'm going to install this. And again, so we just want to show you what's possible with this. Um, I imagine y'all will do lots of things to play with this. And you'll see that inside here now we should, we need to enable our calendar plugin. And here mm -hmm. you will see all the plugins that are enabled. So I think now we're good. I think we can actually show it now. Yep, yeah, it's right here. Boom. Okay calendar yeah. widget yeah we have a calendar in its own little tab i like to drag it out to its own little pane so i can see it all the time um i'm not sure if you do that ben but uh, so I let's like see, see like 
so like like this just like below here yeah. by itself exactly yeah got it and now we have a calendar open all the time um yeah yeah so okay. i guess yeah so if i click on this what is, what is it doing for us right here yeah so we are creating a note with uh, a particular file format um in this case we have as this iso ish um a default date standard so um year month day and it's uh so here it's prompting us if we if we want to create the note so we'll, we'll say yes um i know i don't have this prompt uh in my arrangement oh interesting uh, yeah um so does your obsidian prompt you every time you make a daily note ben uh if i have if i click on the calendar yes but because i have my own shortcut for automatically creating it i definitely skip the prompt myself oh interesting yeah so my, mine yeah. never prompts me but anyway okay so we have made a note it is titled uh 2021 04 29 um and this is this is in the same pile of notes as everything else. Um, I know that I like to put these notes in another folder uh, because yeah, uh, if you write too. if you write a note every day, uh, it it kind of uh, overwhelms all the other ones. So it is it is worth putting those in another folder. So yep, you've made a new folder. Um, I I did originally call this uh, daily notes. Uh, I think I'm gonna rename mine to calendar at some point. Okay, let's rename that to um, calendar. Let's do that. Yeah, that's actually a good, that's a good name. Yeah, I'm just because. There's not just daily notes in there. There's going to be weekly notes and monthlies and annuals and that kind of thing. And they're not mm -hmm. daily, but they're they're regular. They're periodical. Um, okay, so we have this regular note, and you have a title, April 29th, 2021. Uh, I wanted to talk about templates at some point today. Do we have enough time? Eight minutes I, on the clock. Hi. Yeah, we're running short. Yeah. Uh, how about let's show them the core template? That yeah. way they can see at least what's possible. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, so the core template plugin uh, is good enough for most people, I think. Uh, well, or at least to get started. Enable, enable that. Yeah, templates, fantastic. E beauty. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're gonna put the. Let me create a new folder real quick called mm -hmm. templates. And so now we will say that. Okay, so basically we're configuring the template plugin to pull our templates from the templates folder. That's all we're doing. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. Let's make a template. Let's make something right. with, um, well, I guess the format that you've just described. Uh, we want a heading with, uh, I guess, a human readable date uh, at the yes. top. So yep. yeah, let's make a daily note template note. Um, so your file is called daily note. Uh, I like to call my templates uh, template. So daily note template. Uh, yes. but, uh, but I guess, I guess, I guess your folder kind of describes that already. So like maybe for you, it's redundant, but anyway, um, yep. So we have daily template and you've already created a single hash for heading one and then uh, curly bracket date. So um, it's been a little while since I've used this plugin, but um, yeah. yeah, if we delete the daily note that we have and then create it again. Um, yep. Yeah, so if we- Oh, this one, yep. Yeah, so, so let's- Delete this. Yeah, let's delete oh, actually, this I can just, oh, okay, yep. Yeah, and then, uh, oh, did we configure daily notes to use the template already? That's us. Okay, yeah, all right, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's go into preferences. Let's go to our plugins. Let's go to daily notes. And then we uh, are going oh, to Oh, here's the thing. We can configure where it goes. So it automatically goes inside the calendar folder. Perfect. And we're using the template, uh, daily note template. Yes. All right. Okay, and so now we we're good. Close this. I think. Let's create this again. And look at that. It's hey, automatically populated that. We for us. automatically have a title, um, although it is a kind of a machiney uh, looking yes. title. Uh, <laughs> so, if, so we probably don't have time for this, but uh, if you fiddle with this some more, uh, you, you can configure this to automatically generate a more humanish um, title and a bunch of other really cool things. You can automatically insert uh, all kinds of stuff daily quotes, images, uh, lots of cool stuff that you can do in the templates. Um, yeah, so that is templates. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, see. someone has found my theme. <laughs> Thanks, Meg. Yes, uh, <laughs> yes. I, I did make a theme. You don't have to use it. I strongly encourage you all to uh, write your own themes because it is a really great way to practice CSS. It is, um, you, you're making, you're writing CSS for one browser, Obsidian, and uh, you can kind of just experiment with. Uh, pretty bleeding edge features that you might not get to use in your day-to-day. -day. Like I don't get to play with CSS variables in my day-to-day, -day, but I get to play with them uh, in an obsidian theme. So there's yeah. you know, lots of good reasons to uh, mess around with your own theme.
Um, uh, let's. Yeah. We have a couple of questions here, though. Uh, let's see. How do you use notes on your phone? So the mobile app. You want to talk a little bit about that? Oh yes. So uh, I'm I'm a little sad to say that it is kind of a uh, kind of closed access. So like yeah. there is an Obsidian app. Like I use it all the time. Like uh, and it it's it it is it, it is a very solid app. It is almost as far as I know, it is feature complete with the desktop app, which is astounding. Um, uh, but uh, you, you have to pay to kind of get into that if you want to use that the mobile app right now. For now. But for now. Yes. Yes. yes for now. Yes, they, they they will be opening up the mobile app to everyone soon. Um, yes. And uh, it's been my experience with Obsidian developers that th they are actually incredibly fast. So um, mm -hmm. it, 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 uh, the the time frame for Obsidian mobile app for everyone is probably in the area of uh, a, a few months, maybe. <laughs> yeah, and I think what's really worth mentioning is for those who are newer to Obsidian is that this is not even version one yet. We are actually still in uh, basically a beta mode where they're constantly listening to the community and enhancing things. So things like the mobile app, like that's a feature they're they're building that 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 also they said intends to be free as well. And so that's why like for those like why wouldn't you use another like software like for example Foam is brought up a lot, which is an open source note taking app as well that has a lot of features similar. Um, for me, I love the fact that Obsidian has like basically a full time team working on it. Um, you know, I obviously, uh, for those who don't know, like I'm on the view core team, so I do a lot of open source. I, I love open source a lot. It's just when it comes to things like my notes, I, I, it, it's nice knowing there's someone working full time on the infrastructure underneath of it. So I think for me, that's a big win. I don't know about you, Hung Su. Oh yeah, totally agree with all that. And um, for any of you who are starting to play with Obsidian as well, uh, the Obsidian Discord is one of the most active communities I've ever seen. Like uh, it is a constant stream of uh, really good vibes, really, really helpful people. There's always something happening. You can always find people who can help you with your particular problem. Or if you're if you're writing a plugin for this, if you're writing a theme for this, if you're just confused about the general idea of connected note thinking or uh, anything to do with Obsidian, there are so many people there who are just uh, uh, are so ready to help you, including the Obsidian developers who are there all the time. Um, That's true. Yeah. They are very, I'm very surprised at their response rate. Yeah. Uh, Okay, I think we have time for one more question. And I think Meg and Adrian both are very excited about this. So um, can you link between different vaults? Oh, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it depends how they're organized, I suppose. Uh, I'll would, I would generally say no. Uh, I, I've, have, I've seen some people uh, nesting vaults inside each other, uh, but I don't. I'm, I do not advocate uh, this kind of strategy. So I'll, I'll generally say no. <laughs> yeah, I would say what, at least as, as of this moment, Obsidian's biggest weakness is collaboration. Um, so if you wanna share things between people and work on things simultaneously, still things like Notion are very, very good at that. Um, permissions and those sort of things. Because Obsidian is privacy first, as you can imagine, unfortunately collaboration is not probably like the foremost feature. But it does seem like as they offer other services, you'll see on their site, like if you want to use their Obsidian Sync and publish for like making your notes public to people, I think we may see more collaboration features in the future. But as Hungs has mentioned multiple times, it, it is local data privacy first. So at this moment, if you want to collaborate, I do think for the most part, it, use another tool for that. And then again, because things like Notion are marked down too when you copy and paste, granted, they have a little bit of their own flavor. You can still copy it back into your vault so you can reference it later, but that's... I've just used one vault for everything in my life, so it's easy to switch. I don't have like a work vault and then a personal vault, and I just keep it all in one place. Yeah, I, I like that strategy as well. Um, I want to quickly answer a question I think I see here. Yes, um, go for it. Yeah, so I see something. Um, oh, oh, oh no, I, look, I think I lost it. I'm pretty sure I saw something. It was... Okay, so if this is a note-first system, what is the use for vault uh, folders here from AliPixel? Mm -hmm. Uh, so I know that for me, um, uh, sometimes I want to do some additional processing on uh, certain kinds of files is one thing. So um, I mentioned earlier that I have an embeds folder for rich media, and mm -hmm. I like being able to separate, you know, like uh, videos and PDFs and images because sometimes I might want to do some, like you know, a, a bit of extra processing on, on an image, or um, uh, you know, I might want to uh, snip my uh, videos a little bit. Like so, that's one thing. Um, another big thing is publishing. So um, a neat feature with Obsidian is that you can publish your notes to the 
a big wide world if you like, but you probably don't want to publish everything. You probably have uh, notes that you want to keep, you know, keep to yourself and the notes that you keep, uh, well, the, the notes that you want to publish to the outside world. So sometimes there are uh, good reasons for strict categories in Obsidian. Um, what Ben and I are generally advocating for is that strict categories should not be your only organization method. You should have a bunch of different uh, organization methods. Yep. So folders and notes and tags and like, lots of different ways to organize things. And hey, yeah. these are Ben's published notes. Yeah, this is out. This is outdated though. <laughs> but okay. um, I just dropped a link for the chat. Um, it is a website there. Um, unfortunately, we don't have time to get into this, but uh, please feel to check it out. This is an example of publishing it, and I did a custom theme. Um, I really need to publish my Night Owl theme from inspired from Sarah Dresner. But with that, ah, Hangzhou, the time has flown by. Um, we didn't have enough that, time. <laughs> I know, I know. I think about this, I'll probably do another session. So for those following me on Twitch, um, yeah, okay, so that's what I said. This is the end of the takeover from Ben. If you're looking for me on my normal Twitch stream, it's under Ben Code Zen. Uh, so I'll, uh, actually, Hangzhou, if you don't mind dropping that link real quick for twitch.tv slash Ben Code Zen. Mm -hmm. um, but in the meantime, a huge thank you to White Coat Captioning for spon uh, being here to sponsor today, so, or to caption today. <laughs> My brain's melting. So thanks, Jordan, for being here. And again, that's made possible by our sponsors, Netlify, Fauna, Auth0, and Hasura. So um, with that, uh, as far as the schedule, don't remember that you can find the schedule for Learn with Jason here at learnwithjason.dev slash schedule. And it looks like on... Tuesday, it uh, looks like we have something coming up. Looks like, oh, May 20th, looks like it's going to be the next episode for now. Uh, learning Kotlin and JS. So with that said, uh, yeah, I think that's everything for now. Um, thanks so much, everyone, for joining. It's been an absolute blast. Um, and thanks, everyone, for hanging out in the chat. With that, let's call it uh, again. Yeah, thanks, Hung Su. And This is so much fun. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>